Hey, channel. Fernando from SkyFi Audio. Well, the summer flew by. We're now at the first week of September uh, after the long holiday. And it's been a, a really interesting month for us. We had tons and tons of sales, uh, smaller items, nothing really gigantic, but a lot of volume. Things seem to be picking up nicely at the end of the summer, as it always does. Uh, and September tends to be a pretty strong month for us. So we expect to be pretty busy this month. But we were very busy uh, taking in stuff, and that's what makes these videos fun. Look at the mess over there. We've got tons of stuff to go over. Probably over 40 items have arrived over the summer. People clearing out their houses, moving, downsizing, you name it. And it all lands here, which is uh, what makes this so much fun. So it's going to be about a 15, 20 minute video. I'm going to walk around the shop, show you all the things that have come in. Um, I'll try to find as much of it as possible because some of it has already been processed and put on our website. And um, before we jump too further, uh, if you like the videos, please like and subscribe uh, to help keep us motivated. If we've earned uh, your interest, uh, that's a great way to repay us. So I'm going to jump right in. First and foremost, these Krell speakers, they're hard to miss. They got to be about four feet tall, made out of extruded aluminum. It's one of the few brands that actually goes through the great expense and effort to make uh, speakers out of aluminum. We're talking about a one inch thick top and bottom plates and uh, a three piece or four piece uh, cabinet. Uh, back baffle, these sort of uh, ribbed front and uh, also a solid aluminum front uh, baffle. Uh, for grills, they use the same sort of thing that um, Sonos Faber pioneered with these rubber bands. And check this out. That's one of my favorite tweeters in the market. Um, I don't think anyone uses this tweeter any longer, but it was uh, an amazing tweeter and one of the best sounding ones. So this has two mid-ranges, three woofers, got four feet tall. These are LAT 1000, that's the model number. So you can see here, LAT 1000. So probably the heaviest speaker we've had of this size. So quite a, it's gonna be very interesting packing these and shipping them. But uh, these should be on our website in about two weeks or so. So look out for that. Also, this REL subwoofer. I've had this actually in my house before, this exact model, which I loved. I used it with my Spender SP100s. So it's a B-series uh, model B1. Great, great brand for subwoofers. All right, let's see the Bang & Olsen sold real quick. These are going out to uh, a good client of ours. So we're excited to find a great home for these Bang & Olsons. Uh, we got a pair of Audio Research Reference um, 210 uh, monoblock amplifiers in black, which is a little more difficult to find than silver. They actually use a remote for the biasing and all the calibration of the amplifier. These we've already gone through. Got them working absolutely brilliantly. And on Friday, these will go online. Check this out. They use the, the big 20 amp power cords as well. A nice amplifier. Right, moving over here. This is interesting. It's a, it looks like a preamp, but it's actually not. It's an MA6200 integrated amp. And I never had one of these in the shop before. And this month alone, we've got two of them. What are the odds of that? So all the preamp controls from, uh, from this era, but with a nice little amplifier built into it, which turns it into an integrated amplifier. It looks like here we've made some custom jumpers for it. So you've got two sets of outputs for speakers. So great form factor. We have cabinets for this if you like the cabinet look. So here you go, the MA6200, real nice piece. Looking at our shipping area, these are all the things we're looking to go out from the weekend sales. Don't see anything new. MC60 sold. Name streamer, ASR, phono preamp. There's an integrated, a Mac amp, a bunch of stuff. Just waiting to go out. Um, over on our test bench, this is our long-term test bench. This is where, after a, a repair, we run things for a couple of days to make sure they're good. We've got a, a Macintosh M8 2205. It looks like we rebuilt this thing and we opted not to do the dark blue meters. This has a really nice light tint to that. Real cool looking piece. And then the Macintosh uh, Solid State MF200. It's a MOSFET amplifier in long-term testing right now. These came in. We haven't gone through them yet. These are Macintosh vintage speakers. Check out this layout, how cool it is. They are the XR5, so real early in the XR series. 
call it an isoplanar radiator system. So it looks like a little tweeter array here, some sort of up and mid, um, mid range and woofer. And these look like they've gone through, been gone through already, which is nice. The foams are supple and in great shape. So it looks like someone took the care to restore these already. Little note there. And I believe these pair up with the environmental equalizer really nice that we also got with this system. Love how they did the grill here. All right, moving down into the bay. The MBL sold also locally to a chap in New York. So we're getting ready to move these out this week. Anything new here? I don't see anything other than that. All right, back into the main area. This is pretty cool. This came from Japan. It's a Luxman uh, M06 integrated amplifier, probably 1990s vintage. Um, love the case on it. And it's got a VU meter that is numeric. So it actually, the numbers jump on, up and down as the volume goes up, which is I've never seen before. Very interesting. It's got a nice cabinet on it as well. Look at these binding posts. It's kind of cool. That's pretty unique. Oh, and it's got XLR inputs. All right, so that's from Luxman. These Apigees also with the integrated sub. So the Apigees are the top section and I think the subwoofer was an upgrade for them. These are the Apigee stages. And the subwoofer is a mini grand. So we've got the big brothers to these out in our listening room, probably the best speaker in the shop. And if you don't have the size or budget for that, these minis are uh, a nice alternative. You can see the ribbons are in really nice shape. If you've noticed, we keep only just one speaker in the shop uh, because of storage issues. Um, the other speaker goes into our storage unit outside uh, across the street. We actually have a great setup here. And um, you'll see that we just, uh, one out of the two speakers are kept here, almost like a shoe store. All right, looking through the speaker bay, I don't see anything new, but on the Macintosh rack, I did take in a bunch of stuff. So we've got this MX-130. Um, it's an AV tuner controller center. Uh, we like to use it as a preamp. It's a wonderful preamp with a great built-in tuner. Uh, ignoring the video processing features, which are a bit outdated, this is an excellent preamp, nevertheless, for audio. Now, if you want a vintage home theater system, we've got the matching amplifier, which is a 7106. That's an MC7106, just below it. So it's a nice setup. And we did get a laser disc player with this, but I'm having a hard time finding a belt for it. Um, it's a Pioneer rebranded as a Macintosh laser disc player. I'll show you the belt in a bit. If you have a, access to one, please, please, please let me know. I'd hate to have that thing land up in the, in the landfill. Um, let's see, back to the Macintosh stack. A couple of tuners made it out of restoration. Looks like we've got at least two of these great MC2505s. Great little vintage amplifier and it's big brother down here. A 2105. I'm surprised this is still here, the MA230. This is probably their best tube integrated and it's been fully restored. We did a beautiful job with this piece. If you're looking to, for a tube integrated amp from Macintosh, that's your best bet. All right, over here, we've got a MX110 that has also gone through a restoration process, as you can see by all the custom caps all the other parts on it. All right, swinging over to the workbench, MR7083, an MA6100 preamp amplifier. This is also an integrated, um, but in solid state. And it's waiting in a volume control. But cosmetically, look at this thing, it's absolutely mint. We have that with Macintosh. People t took really, really nice care of it. A lot of times it went into a wooden case like this or it got built into a wall. Uh, and people back then in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, they spent a ton of money on equipment and they took amazing care of it. So almost every Mac piece we get, unless it sat in a basement somewhere, that's really the, the end of it. But unless it sat somewhere moist, they actually end up in really nice shape. 
Oh, here's the M101 environmental equalizer. This was recommended to be sold with XR speakers at the time. And again, we've got a, a minty one here to go with those speakers. To the left, Jeff Roland. Amplifier. Look at these binding posts. It's a Model 1 stereo amplifier. We went through this and it tested really nicely. <coughs> Excuse me. Soda Sapphire turntable in an oak cabinet, complete with a record clamp and the pump and everything else, actually the power supply. It's not, a, it's not an air powered unit, that is just the power supply for it. A nice piece. Over here we've got a Bang & Olufsen Biogram 8000 turntable. I haven't gone through this yet. I'm hoping to finally get one that works. We go through quite a bit of Bang & Olufs equipment. A lot of it ends up in landfill, but when we have one that works, it sells really well. <coughs> All right, Linsondek LP12, quintessential British turntable. This is a, a really nice piece. This one's fitted with um, a basic LVX tone arm. A lot of great upgrades for it. Looks like it already has the power supply has been upgraded, so we'll service this unit. These have power supply issues generally, so uh, it'll be some time before we're able to service it and get it to market. A couple of cabinets here. They've been selling super well. Uh, we've been restoring cabinets little by little as we have time. We did about eight or 10 of them over the summer and they sold almost immediately. If you're looking for a cabinet, you've gotta be careful. It's not just about the model number of the cabinet, but more about the pan locks that go in it. These are the, the locks that accept the unit and lock it in place. So if I turn this around for you. Uh, these come in all different lengths and sizes and stuff. So we've got to be very specific about whether it'll work with your piece. So we generally need to know the depth of your piece. If you send us that in with a note, we'll find out if we have a cabinet for you. All right, here's the second of the MA6600s, integrated amp I mentioned. And what a great receiver if you pair these two together. This is an MR77 solid state tuner, really nice performer. A lot more affordable than the 78 and it does about 98% of what the 78 can do. So this is a really nice pairing right here. And these came in with the XR speakers that I showed you earlier. So that was a complete system. Over here, I've got an Agra 4SJ. A client has asked, this was part of our private collection, but um, a good client of us has asked if we'd sell it. So we're gonna take some photography and, and get this marketed. Uh, Adam Savage. Um, just did a great video on the 4SJ. If you're interested, I'll put a link below. One of the coolest pieces of audio gear ever created. This is what movies, movies were recorded on through pretty much all the 80s and 90s. It's a beautiful reel-to-reel -reel machine. We're able to fit it with large adapters so we can put in 10-inch reels. Here's our uh, um, Japanese market Luxman. This is an L505U. Beautiful integrated amplifier. Looks like we're going through the voltage conversion for it. All right, going over to my bench area on the turb table stand. I've got a pretty rare piece here, the Akai 747, the GX 747. We've done a bunch of these over the times. Uh, Gear Patrol magazine actually did an article on us featuring this uh, specific model. It's a really nice model. It's got um, a technology on the heads that keeps them from wearing out. So it's a really safe purchase for someone who's concerned about durability um, almost all of them need to be serviced when they come in here. They've got a pretty fancy motorized uh, tensioning system that fails over the years. So that needs to be serviced on just about every one of the GX 747s. This one's in black, which is really rare. We've had a bunch of silver ones, never even seen one in person in black. Really nice uh, cosmetics with its glossy side panels and a rosewood. I've got a take up reel that I took out of storage with a Kai branded to complete the system. Wonderful machine. And this is an auto reverse machine, meaning that we can play in both directions. This is a really nice feature if you're using a reel to reel for convenience. They made an earlier model that had VU meters with needles instead of um, LED indicators, but this is the one to have. All right, working over to my bench, I've got a AccuFace amplifier. It's a C222. 
Look at the construction of this thing. Absolutely beautifully made. It's got a fairly elaborate phono section right here, stage here. Great power supply. Nice preamp from AccuFaced. Not remote control though, which is the only bummer about it. But if you don't need remote control, this is a great sanding unit. Got a Tamburg 3001 tuner waiting to go through testing. I'm a big fan of this tuner as well. Out of all the Tamburg tuners, the 3001 is the one I have. On our repair shelf that came in recently, well, this three-piece Luxon system, check this out. This is a C1000 preamp. It is solid state. This is the tuner just below it, the T110. And then the match ampl amplifier is here, which is an M4000. So a series that we've never seen here before, but it's nice to have all three matching pieces. We will go to market on these as a set, all three of them, once we sort through a little channel imbalance on the amplifier. We've got to service this before we can set, sell the whole set. A Yamaha CR2020, one of the best looking receivers from Yamaha. Look at all those buttons. Beautiful, typical Yamaha finish with the Yamaha square knobs which I'm a big fan of. So that's waiting for a light service. Let's see, we've got a seven channel Macintosh amplifier waiting to go through. And this here is a Krell. All right. Up on the left, we've got the in-house uh, vehicle. This is our 540i sport wagon. One of very few made. Got a little rattle at the rear end. Looks like a little link that is loose, so I'm gonna take care of that. That's why it's up in the lift. Oh, if you're a fan of cars, we are hosting our first ever Cars and Coffee on September 18th. If you have a car that you wanna share with everybody and you wanna see some cool audio, we're gonna open the shop up to the street, have the doors open, we're gonna put some speakers outside spin some vinyl and host and share our passion for cars with, uh, with our viewership, which, which we have that in common with. So uh, there is a link on our website at skyfiaudio.com. We have a few spots left and it's by registration only. So if you'd like to attend, if you're in our local, local marketplace, October 18th from nine to 12, we'd love to see you just sign up below. I'll put the link in the description of the video as well. And I think that wraps up this crazy intake. Uh, thanks for watching. SkyFiAudio.com is our website uh, where you can subscribe to our newsletter and see our latest arrivals, which has a separate section in the pull-down menu. Thanks so much for watching, guys.